Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video I want to share with you my food waste life hacks. I came up with probably like 20 food waste life hacks or something like that. Most of these principles can be adapted to any budget, to any lifestyle. And they cover different areas of life. Cooking, shopping for food, storing food, repurposing food and also throwing away food. Some things might be not applicable to you, but we all know there is no solution that fits all. Just hear me out and see what fits your life. So let's start with the area how we store food, how we make sure that the food lasts longer. I think the biggest problem people throw food away that either something goes bad and they just didn't have enough time to consume it or they forgot that they have something and the expiry date ran out or we just had too much food and we didn't know we can actually preserve it for later. So for me, just learning little hacks what can be frozen was a game changer. For example, when we buy too much carrots and I know this carrot gonna go away, I know that I can actually grate this carrot and freeze it in my freezer. So next time when I'm cooking something, I can just take the frozen one. The same goes to some herbs. If I have too much cilantro or dill or any other herbs, I just cut them in small pieces and freeze them. So next time I cook, I just take some frozen one and just put it in my soup or in my stew and whatever I'm cooking. Before I would have so much herbs just go to waste. If you are concerned about using plastic, don't worry, you can either freeze in glass jars or you can buy silicone freezer bags, they are reusable. Also, you can actually reuse those Ziplocs many times. Other things that you can freeze is actually leftovers. Whenever I have some chili con carne, some beans, some stews, some pasta sauces, some soups that I know we're not gonna finish, I can freeze those. We often make homemade stock. I just freeze it in a little cube. So next time when I cook something and the recipe calls for the stock, I just use the one I have in my freezer. Another good thing about the freezer, if you freeze things, they can actually last there forever. Obviously, the more they are frozen, and especially if you freeze it and freeze it, they might lose its value. But in general, the freezer can preserve things for longer. Because somebody would tell me like, I don't know, those herbs were in the free freezer for a couple of months. Are you sure they're still good? Whatever is frozen, and if it wasn't unfrozen many times, can be eaten, it's not gonna go bad. Freezing is just the best way to preserve things. How do you think they plan to preserve people in the cryogenics and preserve eggs? For years, that's exactly how they preserve it. I can actually go on and on about freezing. Yeah, freezing things was a game changer. But obviously that's not the only way to preserve food. If you cook a lot at home and you use herbs, learn how to preserve them in the best way. For example, if you buy mint or basil and it usually goes bad in your freezer, you're gonna be better off just putting it in a little glass with water and leaving on your counter. Those guys are gonna last longer. Other things like cilantro, if, it, if you put it in some wet wrapper, it can be wet paper, wet wax paper, or just a plastic bag and you give it a little shower to your cilantro and then put it in a glass of water, it's gonna last you weeks instead of a couple of days and then it goes bad. In terms of keeping fruits and vegetables longer, you have to learn how to store those fruits, fruits or vegetables in it. For example, just go and learn what things shouldn't be put in the refrigerator. For example, potato, onions, garlics, tomatoes, and lots of other things, they don't need to be in the fridge. Tomatoes, for example, they are much riper and better if you just keep them on the counter. Then let's talk about the food in your fridge. If you are like me and you're eating a lot of vegetables and fruits, learn how different they should be kept. The biggest distinction is that some vegetables get wilted and some get moldy. For example, carrots, they get wilted, so they have to be preserved in the humid environment. Sometimes you can actually chop your carrots and put them in a jar filled with water and your carrots are going to be preserved much better there. But then there are other like fruits and vegetables that are going to get moldy. So those guys have to be kept in the dry space. So for example, if you use CRISPR in your fridge, you better separate things that need humidity and things that need the, the dry air. I feel like I need a separate video for how to store your produce and your foods. Let's talk about other area of food waste, is how we cook or how we eat our food. I can definitely say that learning how to cook and learning to experiment with food help me to reduce food waste. Right now, for instance, we are not throwing any leftovers away. We are not throwing any produce or any foods. 
Whenever I cook, I always use this creative approach. I just look at my fridge and see like, okay, what do we have there? What can I make out of it? Of course, if you don't have much cooking experience, it's kind of hard for you to experiment. But the funny thing, there are actually apps and websites that help you come up with recipes based on what you have in your fridge. This might be a good starting point for some of people who want to learn how to experiment with foods. But in general, the more you cook, the more you know how to mix and match things. Another principle is to be creative how you repurpose foods. For example, one of my favorite recipes, I make this pasta bolognese sauce or some similar tomato sauce for pasta. And I usually make a lot of it. And then the leftover I use for the next dish. For example, I would cook some beans and add those beans to this pasta sauce and just have another dish, have some chili. And if there is something left from that meal, I would usually freeze it. And next time we are cooking rice or anything, we will just pour this thing over rice. Another game changer for me was that you can actually cook certain meals with food scraps. Yes, you heard me right, the food scraps. In my family, we cook a lot of soups. We do ramens, we do pho, we do just, I don't know, regular soups. So every time I cook something and I have some food scraps, it can the freezer have a special food scraps bag. It can be carrot peels, little pieces of onion that I didn't use, or even some wilted vegetables in my fridge. Sometimes I forgot this little carrot and got wilted completely, or I had those mushrooms that got wilted and dry. The next time I make a homemade broth, I will put all the scraps there. Actually, for the food scraps soup or food scrap broth, I will make a separate video. It's gonna come later this week, so make sure you watch it. This is a great way to give a second life to those food scraps and also to save some money. You don't need to use like legit carrots or onions. I mean legit. Speaking of homemade broth, you not only can reuse food scraps there, but also actually any meat leftovers. Let's say you did some barbecue and you have some ribs, or you had some turkey for some holiday and you have lots of stuff left and nobody wants to eat it, just freeze all those things and you can just put them in the broth and that's how you're gonna have a homemade bone broth, which is super healthy for you. I understand that lots of people switch to non-meat diet, but technically the bone broth is such a immune boosting food that it's kind of hard to resist. And there are millions of other ways to repurpose your food waste, your food scraps. For example, if you are juicing a lot, so you have lots of fruit pulp that you usually throw away. You can make some banana bread, muffins. From veggie pulp, you can actually make these cool little pancakes, almost like vegetable patty that you can use for sandwiches or just eat it like that for breakfast. And technically, when we speak about juicing, if you are the person who, do, who does a lot of juicing, I would suggest you to reduce the amount of juicing you do. Because first of all, there is lots of leftovers. And second, when you do juicing, you actually discard lots of fiber, like pulp, which is actually has so many benefits for you. And just do the juices, especially the huge amount of juices. That means basically means you're consuming a lot of sugar and not enough of fiber. So smoothies, on the other hand, so when you blend everything together, are much healthier than just juices. I'm not saying that the juice is unhealthy, but just juicing nonstop, it's just a big waste of resources and not so nutritious and healthy. Other ways to repurpose like leftover food that you know gonna go to bed, let's say you have some leftover bread, you can do two things. First thing, you can actually cut it in slices and freeze it, and then you can take out the slice from the freezer and just put it in your toaster and warm it up or microwave, whatever you have. If you don't have toaster or microwave, just put it on your stove, on the pan, just warm it up, and that's how you have a fresh bread. Another way to use this, uh, the bread that's gonna go stale soon, just cut it in little cubes, dry it, either air dry or just use your oven on the lower heat and just make these croutons. Those croutons can be added to salads, to any other foods, and they just gonna make your meal like fuller. Also, if you have a blender, you can blend your dry bread and create some breadcrumbs, homemade breadcrumbs. Another important principle that I follow like a crazy meaning is respect the leftovers. If you didn't finish any meal in a restaurant or even at home, make sure you put those leftovers in the airtight container and put it in the fridge and don't forget it there. I usually always have a mental note. Okay, I have this uh, leftover where I can technically eat it. 
or can I repurpose it into some other food? Let's say we have a small leftover from some Chinese restaurants. It's not enough for two of us to eat. I would just add some other ingredients to this meal and just recook it into something else. Or just think what else I need to cook to kind of make a mix and match plate. So making a mental note how and when I'm gonna use it just before you put it in the fridge and forget it completely is a good practice not to forget about it. Also, I make sure my fridge is never cluttered, never full, it's always empty or half empty. So this helps me to control what's in my fridge and helps me not to forget things. I used to be a person who would one day discover something in the back of the fridge and like, oh wow, I had this rice there. Now it doesn't happen to me anymore because I have a habit of checking my fridge and decluttering it regularly. Another crazy tip how you can make sure you eat the leftovers, reconsider what you eat for breakfast. When I lived in Indonesia, I noticed that people there, they don't have any special meal for breakfast. They don't eat croissants or some crazy pastries or sandwiches. They just eat leftovers from the day before. So the Indonesian family would just have whatever was left from last day meal and add some rice and that's the breakfast. And first time you face fried rice for breakfast, you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't feel like eating rice. But living in Indonesia, I developed a habit that breakfast is just another meal. I can eat anything for breakfast. And I can eat soups, I can eat rice, I can eat crazy stuff for breakfast. So this is something interesting to consider. People can be adapting to anything. So just adapting to eating your leftovers for breakfast can be a great way to save money, to save time on cooking, and also to make sure you finish the leftovers. Another great thing to reduce the food waste is reconsider how you eat foods. For example, when you eat an apple, do you peel it or not? When you cook with carrots, do you peel them or not? When you boil potatoes, do you remove the peel or not? Some people don't do this, but I also know that a lot of people do. So, few pieces of information for you. First of all, the peel usually has more nutrition than the fruit or vegetable itself. So, discarding the peel might be you getting rid of good nutrition. Second thing, if you cook it or eat it with the peel, it means you don't need anything to throw away. And also it saves time. For example, me, when I'm boiling potatoes, I never remove the peel, I just wash them because it's just so time consuming, potato peeling. Another thing to reconsider, I don't know why, but especially here in America, I noticed people think that if something is wilted, that means it's gone bad. I don't know what's the percentage of people that really think, maybe I just met some odd individuals, but literally I heard it from people, oh, this carrot is so wilted, don't use it. It's probably gone bad. No, technically you can still use it. Obviously you can't probably eat it fresh because it's not going to taste as good, but you can always chop it up and use it in some stew, in some soups. So any type of cooking when you're going to be slow cooking something or sauteing something, those wilted things can still work. And especially they work perfectly in a homemade broth because when they get wilted, it's almost like it's a concentrate of nutrition. Okay, this is probably like some weird bullshit I just said. But yes, you can cook with wilted foods. The same comes to fruits and vegetables. If they're a little bit moldy or they're like rotten, you don't need to throw away the whole fruit. Just cut it out, the moldy part, the rest can be eaten. I don't know, people think that, oh my God, the mold probably made this apple dangerous for me. No, if you, if you cut it out and eat the rest, nothing bad gonna happen to you, trust me. Another little tip, I don't know, maybe it's retarded I'm saying this, but I still want to mention it. I notice sometimes when people are cooking and let's say, let's say they have some leftovers like of carrots or a little bit of onion, they usually just throw it away because they're like, oh, what's I gonna do with this little piece? What I do, first of all, I have a box in my fridge where I put these little leftovers, so they're just sitting together. So next time I'm cooking, I look at this box and I'm like, oh, those things need to be used up because they're gonna go bad soon. If I know I'm not gonna be able to use them, I just put them in my freezer. So next time I make a homemade stock, I'm gonna use them. But don't throw these little pieces away. They can be still eaten and used up and they can have a life. Well, let's talk about grocery shopping and how we can reduce food waste already there. Principle number one, shop seasonally. If you talk about produce, whenever you go to the store, if you buy something that's in season now, first of all, you're going to save yourself money. And also you're going to make sure that this produce is bought and used up and not thrown away. The way how the farming industry works, farmers usually produce more fruits and vegetables that actually need it because they want to meet the demand. 
and they know they're going to be always throwing things away because they can't predict how much the demand will be in the end. For us as consumers, buying something that's in season is basically helping farmers to make sure they sell everything they have. And also it's actually very healthy to eat seasonal products because that means they're fresh, that means they are grown locally, that means they didn't travel from far, and also usually they're really ripe and nutritious because if something is grown outside of season, usually it's not very tasty, ripe, and not very nutritious. Something was probably added there. Obviously, another great thing, but it might be not accessible to everyone, to shop at the farmer's market when you shop directly from farmers, so it helps them to sell things that they are, have abundance of, also to sign up for subscription boxes, this can, thing obviously can be a little bit on the more expensive side, but always look for options. Maybe you'll find something cheap. I remember when I lived in a certain area here in California, I visited probably six different farmer's market and I figured out that there is a one farmer market out of six that has actually very cheap produce. If I didn't check all of them and would just check one, I would consider that farmer's market are in general very expensive. So it all depends. Go online, research it, what's the cheapest farmer's market or the cheapest produce store in your area. You might find some jam. Another principle, I already mentioned it, I don't go grocery shopping if I feel I have already lots of food at home. So I try to keep my pantry and my fridge relatively empty and I'm only gonna go shopping when I have nothing to eat. Until that moment, I will just keep repurposing and creating the recipes from what leftovers we have so far or from what food is still in the pantry. This helps me ensure that I never have to throw anything away because the expiry date is over. I just don't even remember throwing anything away in the last couple of years. It's very important to have regular decluttering of your pantry, of all of your shelves, of your fridge. If you are the person who forgets the food to the extent when the expiry date is over, you're definitely the one who has to develop a habit for decluttering. Talking about the expiry dates, this is a very interesting conversation and definitely, definitely requires in another video and maybe one day I will do it. So when you look at the product and it says sell before date, it doesn't mean that this product is going to be dangerous the next date after this day. Sell before is just something that the producer recommends to you or to the store as a guidance, but it doesn't mean the product is going to go bad. Another important thing to understand about the expiry dates is that sometimes some foods don't have expiration. They can last longer, but for example, the producer feels that I better tell people to eat it within six months just because he has to give you some guidance, but some foods can last longer. Well, let's check the United States Department of Agriculture website. Examples of commonly used phrases. Best if used before. Date indicates when a product is a best quality. It's not a purchase or safety day. Sell by. This date tells the store how long to display this product. It's not a safety day. Use by. It's not a safety day except for when used on infant formula. Are food safe to eat after the date passes? With an exception of infant formula described below, if the day passes during home storage, a product should still be safe if handled properly until the time spoilage is evident. Spoiled food will develop off odor, flavor or texture due to nature occurring spoilage bacteria. Even when it says uh, best before, I see people that look at the milk carton is like, oh my God, it's expiring tomorrow. This milk is dangerous. I shouldn't be drinking it. Just smell it or taste it. If it's not bitter, if it's not sour, that means it can be actually eaten. Another life hack that comes from my home country, if the milk went sour, it doesn't mean it's bad. You can still repurpose it. For example, you can make sour milk pancakes. One another cool little tip that helps me to make sure I eat veggies and fruits that I bought. If it's something that you're gonna snack on, celery, carrots, or like apples and other things, make them accessible. If you talk about celery, as soon as you bring it home, wash it, chop it, put it in an airtight container. So next time when you want to snack on celery, it's gonna be so much easier just to grab it from the container instead of you thinking like, oh, I need to wash it and chop it, I'm too lazy for that. The same, the same goes to radishes, carrots, or whatever you snack on. In terms of apples, oranges, and other things, Things, I usually keep them in the fridge so they last longer, but I always make sure that I take a little amount and put them on the counter. So Because when you see them, you're going to remember about them and you're going to eat them. So it, it's just about the habit when you bring them home from the grocery store, you wash them and make them prepared for you to eat it and then you 
slowly add it to your countertop and you eat them instead of forgetting them. Let's talk about ugly produce. My principle is to, when I go to the store or the farmer's market and I look for fruits and veggies, I don't avoid the ugly ones. The trick is actually, and one of you mentioned in the comments it's already, that uh, the more ugly the fruit is, the usually the sweeter and the riper it is. So don't be those perfectionists that looking for perfect shapes. Look for ripe fruits and ripe doesn't mean it's always perfect shape. Sometimes it's the most weird shape. So I intentionally choose the ugly produce. I choose things that I see that they're gonna go bad soon because I know I can cook it. And especially frequently I go to the aisle that says like 50% off or gonna go bad soon and I just buy food there. It saves me money. I save the produce from being thrown away and everyone is happy. Let's also talk about meal planning and uh, making a grocery list and only buying things in a grocery store that are according to your list. I heard about this particular principle from lots of people who talk about food waste hacks and I believe it's actually very good advice. Having a grocery list is a good idea, especially if you know that you are an impulsive shopper, so you know you're gonna go to the store and you see things and like, yes, I'm gonna cook with these vegetables, I'm gonna cook with these things, oh, I'm gonna make this tonight. And then you know that most of the time you just don't cook it or don't cook enough and you just tend to throw things away. Then you know you're an impulsive shopper and you always like, I don't know how they say, you eat with your eyes, yeah? You look at food and you want it all, but then in the end you don't have even time to cook it and or you eat, eat or you eat out. So in that situation, I would use a grocery list. The way how I use the grocery list, so when I, whenever I have some mm, pantry staples, like things that we always keep in our pantry, like onions, garlic, pasta, rice, then whenever we run out, I add it to my list. Why I do this? So when I'm in the store, I don't need to guess, or I don't need to end up in the situation, and we had it sometimes when we didn't follow the list, when we bought garlic three times in one month, and then we had like enormous amount of garlic. I mean, the good thing about garlic, Garlic, if you store it properly, it's not gonna go bad, but it was kind of sad that we kept buying garlic and actually we ran out of onions. But for me personally, the part about meal prepping doesn't really work. I hate meal planning and also I think it goes against intuitive eating. So if you plan that on Friday you're gonna be eating pasta and then you are ending up that Friday not feeling like pasta at all and just fe feeling like salads or feeling like sandwiches, that's kind of retarded to force pasta in yourself. It's retarded for me, I don't want to judge anyone. So I don't do any meal prepping, although it's a good thing. So. As I mentioned before, I have other principles. I just try to experiment and whenever I want to cook something, I'm very m mindful of what I already have and how I can cook from whatever food I have in my fridge. Or when I go buy something, I'm also very mindful that, okay, if I do another grocery run, isn't it gonna make other products go bad? And last but not least, let's talk about throwing food away. As I mentioned before, I don't really throw much organic waste. First of all, I separate my organic waste and then I use composting. In my situation, I do a vermicomposter on my patio. If you're interested in it, I just did a recent video about that. Link will be uh, as usual in the description below. Obviously, not all food can go into the composter, but then I'm trying to think, can I repurpose food? For example, orange peels, they are not so good for the vermicomposter, but what I started doing recently, I'm doing my homemade cleaning solution. You know, when you take some water, you add some vinegar to it, and you also add orange peel and let it sit for a while, and then it's gonna be perfect cleaning spray. So this is one way at least to give another life to the orange peels. Another great way to repurpose your uh, food waste. Did you know that you can use coffee ground as a scrub? So when I lived in Bali and I used to have lots of coffee grounds, I would use them to scrub myself. So instead of buying some body scrub, I would, I would just rub coffee into myself and then take a shower. Some other funny way to repurpose your food leftovers, you can actually regrow certain things. Let's say you have this bit of onion, you know, the one with the roots. It can be green onion or regular onion. You can actually put it in the water and then eventually transfer it to the pot with soil and it will regrow some green onions and you can use it for your salad. The same way you can regrow basil. So if you put basil in a glass of water, it doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. It will give you roots. The same comes with mint. Don't forget to change water constantly. If the water gonna go bad, the plant gonna just rot and not produce the roots. So basically then you 
you can report it in your patio or on your windowsill. Growing herbs is actually also a great thing to reduce the waste because herbs, most of us, we don't use them up. So if you buy this bunch of herbs, you, you're going to probably use like third of it or half of it and the rest gonna go wilted. I already talked about some life hacks how to keep it longer and that you can actually also freeze it. Even the better solution is just grow your own herbs and then when you need some herbs you just cut it from the plant and nothing goes to waste. I would say some herbs are really tricky to grow. For example growing cilantro or dill never worked for me. Basil is also failing on me sometimes because I, I think I don't have enough sun on my patio, patio. But things like mint, it's very easy to grow. Also rosemary, you don't usually need a lot. That's why I have this tiny plant that's supplying most of my rosemary cooking skills. The same with thyme and other things. Let's talk about the last principle. I kept it until the end because it, it involves spending money and I didn't want to talk about anything that's related to spending because that it's not exactly inclusive for people who are out of budget right now. But I think you can also be creative. So this principle is invest in a good storage containers. And here I'm not talking that you have to go and buy this fancy $40 crazy eco-friendly whatever bullshit container. Just be creative. And let me give you some tips. For example, for the freezer, I use silicone freezer bags. You can buy fancy ones that are stasher. And if you can't afford buying them, by all means buy, because they are great. I tried different ones and trust me, stasher are the best. But they are a little bit on the expensive side. What you can do, you can actually go to their website, sign up to their email and just wait for them to have sales. For example, recently they had 25% or 30% sale and I bought a few bags uh, with this sale. There is another one. It's a cheaper option. It's also a silicone freezer bag. It's a little bit less convenient, but at least you can get five bags for like $9 and I will link it in below. For people who can't invest into this silicone storage solutions, you can just buy very sturdy Ziploc freezer bags, or maybe you can even find them in a dollar store, just make sure they are like not like flimsy ones. You can rewash them several times and repurpose. That's what I actually used to do before I learned about the silicone bags. I would just wash my zip bags. The cool thing, if I use them for the freezer, so every time I take out something from this free, uh, Ziploc bag, I just rinse it, roll it and put it back in the freezer. That's how I know that those are the freezer bags. And also I don't really need to be worried that if I keep them in the counter, did I wash them well enough? Because whatever is in the freezer is always preserved. Another great thing is to, to buy or to get some airtight containers because when you have some uh, meals leftovers, if it's an airtight container, there is less likely chance that it's gonna go bad. The containers I use, uh, some are from IKEA, it's a glass container with the plastic um, cover. So because it's a glass container, I can also use those containers when I do something in the oven. So it's actually multi-purpose items. Also, I can use them both for the freezer and for the fridge. If you can't afford buying containers right now, just repurpose glass jars. Seriously, whenever you buy something in a glass jar, I don't know, pickles or whatever you buy, just wash, wash this jar and you can freeze things in this jar. Just make sure you don't fill it up until the end because otherwise it's gonna the glass gonna break just fill it in two-thirds of the container and then you could put it in the freezer and that's how you freeze things and you don't need to buy anything else another convenient thing for keeping things longer and being eco-friendly you probably heard about it it's bix biswax paper obviously it requires you spend your money on it but first of all you can do your own beeswax uh, paper like beeswax wrapper. If you can't buy it, there are other creative ways to go. For example, I reuse all the plastic bags, like let's say the bag that comes with bread, in case I bought some bread in the plastic or like tortillas or something. I usually keep those plastic bags and then I just reuse them to store my herbs or store something that requires to be in a bag so there is some humid humidity in it so it doesn't get wilted. So just repurpose whatever, whatever you have, but of course if you can invest into some next level solution that would be great too but you don't need to rush and buy everything i guess that's it for today i hope i did overwhelm you with all my tips basically those are the principles i developed in years not in one day but but just choose and pick whatever fits your lifestyle uh, and also remember that there is no point just follow somebody's principles or tips unless they really solve your particular problem always think of 
problem and solution. And start with thinking of problems. For example, ask yourself, where is exactly my particular food waste generated? Is it because I forget the leftovers? Is it because I don't even keep leftovers, I just throw food away? Is it because I keep buying fruits and vegetables and they just go bad and I don't even have a chance to use them up? So think what's your particular problem and look for solutions, either in my video or just Google for the solutions. In the internet, there is so much information about everything. You just have to be patient about finding it. Or just be subscribed to the channel. I do videos twice a week and I'm gonna share with you so many tips about everything that is related to eco-consciousness, to environmental, being minimalist, being on a budget but still enjoying your life, all sorts of things that are related to this. And if you like this video, if you found it useful, please share this video with your friends, on your social media, on your whatever blogs or platforms you are in. I would be super excited if more people learn some food waste hacks and just make sure they save money and time and also save some food. Well, that's it for today and let me go cook my homemade broth and tell you in my next video how I made it.